What happens when a company known for making radically different disc shapes stops making radically different disc shapes? Let's find out because the disc is in the details. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. And if there's one thing that I'm known for here on YouTube, other than very detailed comparisons and analysis of discs, plastics, and whatnot, it's that I don't pronounce Swedish words very well. The, the berg, the berg, the berg. So let me say sorry in advance because this video is all about Castaplast's new fairway driver, the Eduga. And so what if I had to write it out phonetically to say it correctly? Before we dive into the Eduga, let's talk about Castaplast. You see, Castaplast is not like other disc golf manufacturers, or at least it wasn't. Castaplast started as a self-described prototyping shop, putting out radical designs like the high-speed double flight plated Rask or the ergonomic super slow Berg, the, the Berg, the Berg, the Berg. But in the last year or two, Castaplast has started releasing a lot more discs that fit a more conventional design, like the Elva, Nord, or Gold. And they've reached this point due to the contrasting fortunes of the aforementioned prototypes. The Berg has been a runaway success. It's helped define a new slot in players' bags. Instead of just any random approach disc, many players now want an extremely slow, low glide disc that makes it very difficult to overshoot the target. There's a lot of other examples now in this category, like the new Luftdisc's Neon, the Lone Star Armadillo, and of course, going back much further, the end of a Rhino. On the flip side, the Rask is interesting and definitely gets a reaction, but very few players actually end up buying one. One thing to keep in mind with respect to prototypes is cost. While a cheap mold may only cost a few hundred dollars to make, that adds up each time you make a change in the design, which is why many companies opt to do 3D printing when it comes to their initial prototypes. But of course, once you finally settle on a design and you wanna have a high quality mold or even more than one for mass production, you're gonna have to spend a pretty penny. For several years, Castaplast had one of the most unique lineups in disc golf, and that's because they did basically the opposite of what everyone else was doing. Nearly every manufacturer starts their lineup with discs that fit the staple slots for a player's bag, such as a stable putter, overstable approach, straight mid-range, a lower speed stable fairway driver, a more overstable faster fairway driver, and of course, a big powerful overstable distance driver. And there's a good reason for this, because nearly every player carries discs like this in their bag. And therefore, of course, they sell well. But if you just think of the discs that match these flight numbers, like the AVR, Zone, Buzz, T-Bird, Firebird, Destroyer, these are some of the best selling discs in all of disc golf. But if we take a moment to compare Castaplast's lineup from 2020, seven years after their first approved mold, you'll find that the only disc they had in their lineup that matched one of these was the Grim X. But as we found out in our very first Flight Numbers Don't Matter video, the Grim X was one of the most understable 12.5 negative 1.3 rated drivers around, and it's also since been discontinued. This flight chart here is a couple years old, missing many of the recent additions, such as the Elva, which would go here, Nord, which would go here, and so on. But after we update it with their other discontinued discs and consider that the new retooled CAX rated at 6502 is not as much of an overstable fairway as the numbers might suggest, there is a big overstable T-bird sized hole appearing right in the middle of their lineup. And of course, that's where the Iduga comes in. But no self-respecting disc golf channel such as ours would take one look at a disc that has 750-ish two numbers and not immediately compare it to the end of a T-Bird. After all, we did an entire Flight Numbers Don't Matter video all about T-Birds. There's another good reason to compare the Iduga to the T-Bird, and that is the name. Iduga in English translates as industrious, hardworking, or diligent. And a popular term you hear disc golfers use for a hardworking, frequently used disc is a workhorse. And the T-Bird is nothing if not hardworking and industrious on the course. So we're going to compare the Iduga to the T-Bird in Champion Plastic, as well as the disc that I have in my bag for this slot, the Discmania Color Glow FD1. 
First, let's see what the Iduga has to live up to with the T-Bird. On Heiser, the champion T-Bird is reliably overstable, not showing any turn whatsoever. And even with some extra power, the T-Bird does what it does best, provides just enough reliable overstability to place perfectly accurate fairway shots. And the reason that I bagged this FD1 from Discmania is largely the same. Here's two different shots with the FD1. And with Caleb's power and torque, which is plenty more than mine, it straightens out just a little bit, but then still gets that reliable fade and shows the Iduga exactly what we're looking for. So let's finally see it in action. On Heiser, it shows us a very similar flight to the T-Bird. No turn, no flip up, just reliably overstable. On slightly less Heiser with a little more power, it does start to stand up to flat, but only for a split second as it quickly fades out. But a Domi Champion T-Bird and a Color Glow C-Line FD1 were always going to be on the more overstable side of this slot anyways. So between that and Caleb's power, I'm not surprised the Iduga had a little bit of turn. However, when I threw it, I found it to be much more overstable. Putting it out high and flat, it got a huge fade. And that means the Iduga passed this test with flying colors and finally fills a critical slot in Castaplast's lineup. But if it did that so well, why am I still here talking about it and not wrapping up this video? Well, I think it's because the Iduga, along with the Elva, Gold, Nord, and maybe even the Krut or Vas, are different. Not from the rest of Disc Golf. They are, I think, what most players would expect when they're looking for a good disc in a lineup from any company. But they are different from the old days of Castaplast's unique prototypes and experiments. Trying something new and different, like the Rask or the Berg, is a risk, but it's a choice, a form of creative expression. Castaplast could easily do what so many other companies do, and just look at popular discs and try to make a copy with their own unique stamp that's somehow slightly different. But they chose to be different. They chose to try something new, and that should be commended. But what changed, and when? When did Castaplast start taking less chances? Perhaps it was right around here, when House of Discs bought a controlling stake in Castaplast. What do you think of Castaplast? And how much have they changed since the acquisition by House of Discs? Leave a comment down below. And also comment below what discs we should explore in the future. Remember, the disc is in the details. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. I'm excited to tell you all that the new SixSidedDiscs.com is almost here. We've been hard at work these past few weeks putting the finishing touches on our brand new website. With tons of features you've been requesting like better filtering options for specific disc types and stabilities, more accurate and reliable shipping options, and finally, international shipping. We also have tons of exciting discs coming in, including recent releases, custom stamps, new accessories, apparel, and much more. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Discord, or of course, right here on our channel for all the latest updates on when our new website will go live. The Eduga, like the Elva, Nord, or Gold. The Eduga, the, the Bergu, the Bergu, the Bergu. For several years, Castaplast had one of the most unique lineups in all of disc golf, and that's in part. But a Domi Champion T-Bird and a Color Glow C-Line FD1 were always going to be on the more overstable slide of this slide. Dang it. For several years, bleh. for several years, Castaplast had one of the most unique lineups in disc golf. And that's because they essentially did the exact opposite of what mo uh, uh, for six sided discs. I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. <sighs> if you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.